In this video, we're gonna build what I think is an adorable, but more importantly, very low-tech space plane. I will say right off the bat, this isn't going to be the easiest space plane in the world to fly, but it is completely doable. And what I like about it is that it can be built fairly early on in either a science or career mode game. And the reason why I wanna talk about space planes at this stage is because it's going to be a great opportunity for us to combine what we've been learning about rockets with what we learned in the past about building planes. And if you need to go back and refresh yourself on those aerodynamic principles from that building your first jet video, it was some time ago, go back and take a look at those. But I'm gonna proceed like we have all of these things down because a space plane is both a rocket and a plane. We're gonna need to understand both ends of this. Moreover, because our tech level is low, I need this space plane to be able to fit inside a 1.25 meter fairing. So that is a further challenge that's gonna be layered on top of this. But what we also need is some motivation for this space plane. And well, last episode we talked about docking and we crewed our first space station. And in that time, well, Dunning Kerman got himself stuck in space and is in requiring of some rescuing and now that we got our crewed space station with our own little orbiter and as you can see as well I've also docked a nice big fuel tank with it so we can keep our orbiter fueled up Jebediah and Aldrum Kerman are gonna go out and pick him up using the rendezvous skills that we've been talking about over the past little while but we're only gonna take him back to the station. So what we're gonna to need to do now is build ourselves a new orbiter, go up there and bring Dunning home to fulfill this contract. So let's get ourselves into the space plane hangar and get this show started. And we're gonna start ourselves off with a Mark I cockpit and we want to be able to hold purples with this thing. So we're gonna go down here and we're gonna grab the Mark I crew cabin. We're gonna stick that at the back. Now, this thing is going to need to behave like a rocket. So it's going to need rocket fuel. So I'm gonna get the smallest tank we got and stick that right in there. I mean, I'm gonna change the texture on this. Um, it's nice to keep the mass of your fuel close to the center if you can because as this fuel drains the center of mass won't move around so much if you have it towards one of the ends then uh, the center of mass can move around quite a bit as the fuel gets drained and that can change the aerodynamic properties of your plane okay we want this to be able to dock so we're going to put a docking port at the back now this thing, if it's gonna behave like a rocket, needs to have rocket engines. So I need to mount some rocket engines and the engines of choice are going to be these little spark engines that you see right here. Uh, where am I gonna mount them? We need to give some mounting points. So what I'm gonna use is some Mark Zero, there it is, the Mark Zero liquid fuel cans. We're gonna just stick a pair of them just like that and we're going to drain all the liquid fuel out of them because we don't need the liquid fuel. Again, our fuel is all right here. Yep, both of those are empty. And then on that, we're going to stick our spark engines like that. And we're going to clean this up just a little bit by putting a couple of small nose cones at the front. And this thing won't be breathing air, so it doesn't need air intakes like uh, a jet. It's not a jet, it's a rocket. And we're gonna just, for look-sees, kind of tuck these in a little bit. We might tweak this again a little later. Just so that the tip of the nose cone is kind of on the edge here. You see what I mean? So that sort of looks... That's uh, And we got to move them this way because if we're going to dock with it, we got to make sure that there's clearance for this docking port. That's looking all right. I don't like... Let's see if we can change some textures, make this look a little better. That one looks a little bit, I think that looks pretty good there. All right, so in fact, now that I'm looking at this, we're gonna tweak this this way just a little bit more so that that piece is lined up. I think that should still give us clearance on the docking port. And you know what, I'm just, just again thinking about rocket bits. Let's give this some lights because this is going to be docking in a backwards direction. So it's gonna need lights at the back. 
So we're building ourselves something that looks quite a bit like a rocket, but of course we don't need a rocket. What we need is a space plane. So let's give it some wings. We're gonna keep it small. The idea again, remember, is to keep this something that can fit inside a 1.25 meter fairing. So I'm gonna grab these deluxe, uh, Delta Deluxe winglets. We're gonna stick them on the side here. And that's clearly way too wide. So we're gonna do some sliding things in. That's gonna be part of this. So we're gonna grab, just to give us a measure here, our 1.25 meter fairing. We're gonna stick that at the back. Again, we want everything to fit inside here. Now remember this fairing, let's build the fairing, can come out pretty wide, right? That's as wide as it goes, so everything's gotta fit. Uh, if you hold, is it terminate fairing construction, the left alt key and click, that terminates it right there. So that gives us our circle. We gotta fit inside the circle. Actually, to keep it from doing that expansion thing because that's gonna get annoying if we go into here one of these options is to turn off that fan that fairing expansion so that gives us a circle that we have to aim for so now what we can do we can grab these and just move them in so they're inside that circle there it is that is just what we got as far as our wings go uh, if we want to get more wing surface, what we can do is we can take these and rotate them, slide them inwards. Actually, let's put it on the local here so we're actually sliding them this way, down a bit more. And by tilting them like this, you're actually getting a little bit more wing area than... Um, you would if you didn't have them on an angle. Now I'm noticing I don't like this bit here, so we're gonna end up rotating that a little bit more. I want everything kind of tucked inside. Let's see if we can shuffle these up. Takes a little bit of tweaking. That that looks okay for now. We'll probably do more tweaking in, in a little bit. So we got some wings up here. Okay, now it's time to start looking at where's our center of mass, where's our center of lift? Because when this thing is flying, we want the center of mass a little bit ahead the center of lift. That is too much. So we need to bring the center of lift more forward so it's closer to where the center of mass is. So we're gonna grab these guys, the AV-R8 winglets, we're just using winglet parts, and we're gonna place these in such a way, there we go. All right, I want to make sure the hatch isn't obscured. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these. We're going to just slide it upwards just a little bit. And what this is also doing is bringing that center of lift in line or vertically with the center of mass, which is not a bad thing either. You can also control the center of lift by rotating aerodynamic surfaces either forwards or backwards. Let's see move it forward but then I can take this and move it back even further and I'd like to not interfere too much with windows aesthetics is important you know tilt it back a little bit this way again yeah that's looking all right okay and again of course we got to fit inside this fairing so we're gonna grab these and we're gonna just slide them inwards the whole idea is that all of this will all fit inside. I'm starting to clip a little bit. That's looking pretty good. Okay, so now that we've gotten that part kind of sorted out, let's take the fairing completely away and really take a look at where our center lift and center of mass are. There we go. That is actually looking okay. Let's remove those overlays. And now we're into aesthetics. Yeah, it's you know what it's it's okay it ain't so bad all right so what else is this thing gonna need it's going to need landing gear because eventually at some point this thing's coming back down onto the runway so we're gonna put one of them up here at the front clearly and two of them at the back and you want this to have a reasonably wide stance here at the back that's going to make it more stable when you finally, when you get to the point where you touch it down. Um, the other thing that you want is you would, you want, 
it to actually be for a space plane that's going to glide down to the runway to be slightly pitched downwards. That helps you stick that landing and not just hit the runway and then just lift back up again. And right now it's very clear that this landing gear is much, much lower than these landing gears. Um, let's see if we can maybe do that and then maybe shift these outwards a little bit this way. That's, that's looking all right. Okay, but what we've got to do is get this close to the ground so we can really, we're going to get it to the point where those landing gear at the back are just touching and what I would like is for this landing gear to be just a little bit above the ground and that means when this thing's sitting on the runway it will be just slightly pitching forward. Okay, let's grab this again, whoops, move this back upwards. I'm just realizing one big thing that I forgot here is a rudder, <laughs> some form of lateral stability. So what we're going to do for the rudder is we're going to grab another airplane part. We're going to put on this AV-T1 winglet. One-way symmetry. We're going to stick that right onto there. That's looking way too big for our fairing. So we're going to take that. We're just going to slide it down. And you might be noticing that this particular rudder has no aerodynamic control surface. Um, it really doesn't need one. Yawing back and forth, not gonna be a big deal when we come back down from orbit. This thing's not gonna fly all over the place. We're gonna mostly kind of do our best to do a straight line. All right, well, once again, we'll check center of mass, center of lift. That's looking pretty good. I don't like the way these are kind of protruding outwards. I'm, I'm, that's kind of bugging me, so I'm going to, this is again getting into static mode. I'm going to move these this way just a little bit. There, that looks better so that those aren't sticking out the back. What else is our little plane going to need? Well, it is going to need reaction control thrusters because we're going to be docking it with the space station. So we're going up here to command and control. We're going to grab some reaction control thrusters and I'm going to be putting them, let's see, I'm going to go with three of them. So this time we're coming out of radial symmetry, pressing R. I'm going to go to three-way symmetry. We're going to put one right in the center there and I'm hoping the other two kind of look okay. Ooh, I'm not too impressed. I'm noticing that some of those ports are a little bit messed up. Let's see here. Uh, perhaps these can be moved. All right, so we're going to put on the center of thrust overlay. And you can see this arrow here, but if you, it turns into a square when you sort of look edge on on it. And from here, you can see you're looking right down the center of thrust, and you'd like that to be lined up exactly in the middle of the center of mass. It doesn't look, it looks like it might, the thrust can come down afford to come down a little bit, which is exactly what I want. So I'm going to use the uh, arrow tool here, or the translation tool, and we'll recenter that. I'm just going to tweak this down just a little bit. That should be good. How's that doing with the thrust? I uh, don't particular. I think what I'm going to need to do is remove the symmetry on this one. Right click on that. We're going to remove symmetry so we keep that. We're going to grab these. Notice how they're, and then we're going to put it on radial and put the, and put the snap on. And try and position these. Maybe no snap. want to make sure that these nozzles aren't interfered in any direction that's looking that's looking okay all right we move it just a little bit in the forward direction and of course for balance we got to put this we got to put three of them at the front again so we're gonna put three of them up here Again, take the radial off, three-way symmetry. Oh, I can see again, put the snap on. Uh, a little bit dork. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing we did before. We're gonna take off the symmetry from that one, and then we'll grab the other two and apply them using two-way radial symmetry. 
We'll do it so it looks about right. That looks about right. We also need to give this thing some monopropellant, so we're going to use these Stratus 5 roundified monoprop tanks. And we're going to stick them kind of out of the way here a little bit. Let's put them right on. Let's get that mass overlay out of there. Put them right here. Uh, let's see. Put snap on. Turn them this way. Get them kind of tucked under that wing a bit. I think that looks all right. We'll slide them in so they look a little bit more aerodynamic and flush with the fuselage. That's looking all right. There we go. Oh, let's center them right on this fuel tank. So we're getting pretty close to having everything on here that we would want to have on here. Um, and I'm looking at my delta V of 327 meters per second. That's way more than I need. And I really want to keep the mass of this down. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our fuel tank. We're going to take a lot of this fuel out. 136 meters per second should be completely fine. I don't see why that won't work. There we go. And finally, this being in space is going to use electricity. So what we're going to do is we're going to get into electricity. We're going to put just a handful of batteries here and here. And we're going to put a single solar panel just on the top here just to make sure these folks won't run out of electricity. Okay. And finally, finally, very soon this thing's gonna be mounted on top of a booster and it's gonna be attached by that docking port at the back. And to get our booster to fly as well as it can, that docking port should be lined up with the center of mass. So we're just gonna do this as best we can. And once again, use the center of thrust overlay to really get myself looking straight down that axis by looking at kind of that little square and just putting it in the middle and if i'm taking a look at the docking port it looks like that docking port should come down just a little bit so we're going to use the translation tool we're just going to slide it down just a little notice i can use the red arrow on the translation tool it's kind of an indication of what the middle is. I think that looks pretty good right about there. I think that'll do it. So what we want to do is definitely test this before we start to put kerbals in it. So a couple of things I want to test. Number one, I want to test, does this sit on the runway okay? And can a kerbal get in and out of the hatch? Number two, I want to test the RCS system, see if it's reasonably balanced and do some tweaking if we feel we need to. And if you need a refresher on how to do this, you can check out my RCS video. And don't forget that on a PC, you can put yourself in orbit by pressing Alt F12 and then selecting an orbit. And that's really handy when it comes to testing. But what I really want to test is its descent. And we'll talk in detail as to how to land a space plane onto the runway from orbit. But that is a topic all onto itself. We're going to put that off for the next installment. Also in the next installment, we're going to be slapping a booster under this thing and sending it up to Kerbin Station to pick up Dunning Kerman and see if we can not get him back down safely to the surface. And until then, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again for the next one.